everyone, it's Tonya with Hidden Light Photography, and today we're going to be learning about integration time and how signal to noise ratio is affected by integration time. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's head on over and learn about integration time. What is integration time? Integration time refers to the total amount of time your camera sensor is exposed to light while capturing an image. In astrophotography, this is achieved by stacking multiple sub-exposures together. The more sub-exposures you have stacked together, the more integration time you have on your deep sky object. In other words, 10 60 second sub-exposures stacked together is a total integration time of 600 seconds, whereas 100 60 second sub-exposures stacked together is a total integration time of 6,000 seconds. The longer the integration time, the more light your sensor collects, resulting in a clearer and more detailed image. For example, an image with 15 hours of integration time will have less noise and more detail than the same image with just one hour of integration time. But how much integration time is enough? That's where the concept of diminishing returns comes in. In astrophotography, diminishing returns refers to the point at which increasing your integration time yields a progressively smaller improvement to the overall image quality. Essentially, the first few hours of integration time will significantly improve your image quality, but after that, the improvements become less noticeable. For instance, going from one hour to two hours of integration time might make a big difference but going from 10 hours to 11 hours may not be as noticeable of a difference. This is because signal to noise ratio improves more slowly as you add more exposure time. A general rule of thumb to follow is, to get a noticeable improvement, you need to double your integration time. In part one, mastering shot noise and read noise, boost your astrophotography quality, we learn that the variations of signal that each pixel collects with each sub-exposure is called shot noise and stacking multiple sub-exposures is how we overcome the shot noise. This is because stacking multiple sub-exposures increases the signal-to-noise ratio. Signal-to-noise ratio is measured as the square root of the signal, which causes big jumps in signal-to-noise ratio in the beginning, but slowly levels off, slowing down the benefits. For example, if we collected 10,000 photons with our total integration time, our signal-to-noise ratio is 100. 100 is the square root of 10,000. If we increased our integration time, making our signal 1 million photons collected, then our signal to noise ratio jumps to 1,000. That's a big jump. But when we start getting signal this high, we start to see the benefits diminish. In other words, the signal to noise ratio leveling off on the graph. Let's increase our integration to bring our signal to 1.2 million photons collected. The signal to noise ratio of 1.2 million is 1095.44. If we bump our integration time again so we collect a signal of 2.2 million photons, then the signal to noise ratio is 1483.24. As you can see, the benefits of going from a signal of 10,000 to 1 million was a difference of 900 in signal to noise. However, going from 1.2 million to 2.2 million, was only a difference of 387.8 signal to noise ratio. Even though we technically had a bigger jump in signal going from 1.2 million to 2.2 million than we did going from 10,000 to 1 million. This is a perfect visualization of diminishing returns. There are a number of variables that will affect what integration time you utilize. You'll need to consider the sensitivity of your camera sensor as well as your telescope optics. A higher end telescope can yield less required integration time due to how it resolves the light going to your camera sensor. A camera sensor that has wild variations in shot noise as well as large amounts of read noise might need higher integration times. Light pollution and atmospheric conditions can affect your images. Areas with heavy light pollution might need longer integration times to be able to pull out the fainter details of a deep sky object. The good news is we have software that can help us with this such as SharpCap Smart Histogram. I'll post links to my SharpCap videos in the description of this video if you need any assistance with getting set up or using the smart histogram. So in the end, what integration time should you use and how do you decide? 
The answer is actually quite simple. You just have to answer two questions. What are your goals for your image? And what's your time worth? Are you looking for higher quality images? If so, then you're going to want higher integration times on an object. But at what point do you consider it too much time? My general rule of thumb is 15 hours on a nebula and 20 hours on a galaxy. There's no rhyme or reason for those numbers. They're just what I've found to get the quality that I'm looking for. Plus, I don't mind spending the time imaging for that long. My advice is get a few hours on an object and process the data. If you want more, then go get some more integration time and reprocess with the added data. Experimenting like this will allow you to get to know what your equipment's capable of and dial in the quality you're looking for, plus what it takes to get there. I hope you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming content. Drop a comment in the comment section. What are your techniques for determining integration time? What kind of integration time do you utilize? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.